Good evening, Zach Ajoy, Director of Information Technology. The IT department makes it, has 17 employees that make up five divisions supporting over 1,400 users, over 1,000 computers, and 3,400 network endpoints. The IT department also provides many other services to the city. In 2018, we received and closed over 12,000 12, support tickets with the majority resolved in the day they were submitted. The fiber network was extended to several city properties. With this project, we eliminated expensive lease lines that allowed us to offer even better customer service with technology, as well as enhance our security posture at those locations. City staff relies on a stable internet connection to function optimally. In 2018, we added a second 500 megabit connection with Verizon, and this new connection helps provide maximum uptime for employees. The new connection also provides reliable connectivity to our mobile fleet of over 500 employees. We also found that when you improve internet speeds, it makes employees happy and efficient. We successfully upgraded several of our enterprise applications. These upgrades enhance the applications as well as fix bugs in the software. And we were able to maintain 99.9% .9 uptime on all of our critical infrastructure that is maintained by the IT department. This is important because if our, if our systems are down, this can result in tens of thousands of dollars per hour in lost employee productivity. In our next budget year, some of our goals include improve application speeds, network speeds, and overall service availability. These improvements are critical for the city's 24-hour operations. We're also looking for ways to offer enhanced services to our mobile workforce. We'll continue to evaluate new technologies for e-government and improve existing offerings. We'll continue to maintain our high level of customer service. And we'll stay vigilant in protection of our internal networks and data. A few of our current security threats include phishing emails that are designed to trick a user into clicking a link or an attachment, ransomware, which is a type of malware that locks your data and holds it hostage for a ransom, usually paid in Bitcoin so it's untraceable. So Zach, I have to ask, so what's the difference in phishing and spear phishing? Spishing? So phishing is a, it's kind of a bright, wide casted net, they're trying to just capture you know, millions of emails at the same time broadcasting out, or spear phishing is it's targeted to specific people. Usually it's, it's kind of CEO, mayor type click fraud where they're trying to get you to click a link, mm -hmm. and once they get your account, they can broadcast it under your, under your credentials. That's just a new, new one I hadn't seen, thank you. Yeah. So ransomware is a new type of malware that locks your data and holds it hostage for a ransom, usually paid in Bitcoin, so it's not traceable. Two notable large cities have been hit, by, hit in the last year, and the recovery cost over $40 million. There are around 4,000 ransomware incidents per day around the world, with, ho with hospitals, schools, and governments are the top victims in these types of attacks. It's estimated that ransomware caused over $8 billion in damages in 2018 around the world. Zero-day vulnerabilities are software bugs that a vendor hasn't provided a security patch for and attackers are currently exploiting. The city has thousands of applications across its servers and desktops. Occasionally, some of these applications may not get completely patched, and that can cause a computer to become vulnerable to an attack. While all city employees are required to take security awareness training, we have some employees that still click on phishing emails. This usually results in an account takeover because they enter their login information into the phishing site. And we had seven successful account takeovers last year that resulted in attempts to send over 30,000 malicious emails. This is kind of a busy slide, but it, it shows some of our security countermeasures. We focus on eight different categories to help protect the city's network. The Internet of Things, Threat Intel, Endpoint Security, Mobile Security, Network Visibility, Cloud Security, Behavioral Analysis, and Encryption. The vendor logos in each category represent the best in class, and we currently use at least one product in each of these categories, and in some areas we have two products. But the sheer amount of data that is generated by these systems it can be extremely difficult to analyze. Because of that, we rely heavily on artificial intelligence for analysis in, in some of these systems, and we're working with the Emergency Manage Management Division on a grant to purchase software that will help with additional data analysis. Our first budget offer is for an additional public safety administrator. The original position was created in 2002 to support the new MDCs for police and fire, and a second position was added in 2007 to help with the support backlog as well as take on some of the police and fire service support. Since 2007, we've implemented digital in-car video, body-worn cameras, vehicle routers, and many other technologies, and two years ago, a new CAD system was implemented that requires significantly more support than the previous CAD system due to its features and complexity. The additional position will help provide a 
buffer for the weekly 24 by 7 on-call support that the current public safety admins provide. And this will help tremendously with their current home and work-life balance. The current admins are resolving over 1,000 tickets per year with some tickets requiring vehicles to be down for a few days while they're worked on. And the additional admin will allow us to work tickets faster and keep the technology running optimally. Our second bu budget offer is for a cloud data backup and recovery. The city performs daily backups of its data, but with the security threats many governments are facing, we must change our strategies. The recent attacks that have affected many organizations highlight the need for, to have quick recovery methods while keeping our backups safe from ransomware. Uh, local backups can become a target of ransomware if you have an outbreak on the network, and some strains of ransomware specifically target your backups first to ensure you're unable to recover without paying a ransom. Our current tape solution for offline backups is not optimal and requires too much human interaction to fully protect the city's data. A cloud-based backup will be done each night, will be geographically separated and off of our local network. In the event of a ransomware attack, we would wipe the affected systems and download our backups from our protected cloud provider. An additional benefit of moving to a cloud-based backup is that we would have the, we'd also have a disaster recovery site that's located in a different part of the United States. This could prove to be critically important in, in the event of a regional disaster that impacted our primary data center and our local data recovery site. Our third budget offer is to standardize on Nitro Pro for PDF editing. Most people associate PDF documents with Adobe because of their, mar their excellent marketing techniques, but PDF is actually an open file standard that has many alternatives. The city has m many versions of Adobe installed across its fleet because the desktop license was purchased without any kind of software upgrade assurance. Adobe is often targeted by malware because it is so prevalent on personal computers and an outdated version of Adobe is an extremely easy target to infect. Adobe Pro is also moving to a subscription model, which is very expensive compared to some of the alternatives and must be renewed annually, otherwise it, it ceases to function. Going forward, we have standardized on Nitro Pro as the city's preferred PDF editor, and with this budget offer, we would move all outdated versions of Adobe to Nitro Pro. Our fourth budget offer is for contractual services for a chief information security officer. The Chief Information Security Officer, or CISO, will be an outsourced senior level executive who is responsible for the strategic development and implementation of information security programs. CISOs have expertise across many industries, which is critical for city operations. This position's duties will include reviewing security operations, cyber intel, monitor for data loss and potential fraud, lead investigations, and when there is a security event, manage the security governance of the program. By contracting with a CISO, we would recognize we realize significant cost savings over a full-time employee since their salaries usually start around $250,000 per year. Also, they're an independent third party with the goal of helping our organization develop the best security pol policies possible, and this allows them to make hard decisions without worrying about stepping on toes to get the job done. Very good. I've got a question about Nitro Pro. Okay. So I assume that's compatible with Adobe since most of the rest of the world uses that? Yeah, the feature parity, as far, as far as reading the documents, there's, it doesn't have any issues with that. Adobe may have a few features that Nitro Pro may not have, some of the tools, but then it's vice versa. Nitro has also the same functionality that Adobe may not be able to. So PDF PD, is, shouldn't make any difference as long yeah, as Yeah, PDF is an open standard. As long as you have readers on there. Yep. Okay. Just a curiosity question. Any questions for Zach, Mr. Noshe? Um, budget offer number four, uh, dealing with the, I think you called it a CISO? CISO? Yeah. Okay. Chief Information Security Officer. Um, so what, what kind of, what, what would be the length of term on the contract and what kind of escalation would we be looking at going forward in terms of percentage as that contract renews? The number that we provided, the $100,000, that was kind of a, that's the baseline benchmark that we've seen that these positions go for. So you could, it could go up maybe 5 10% in the following years, but there's a, this, this particular genre of, the, you know, of information technology, it's, it used to be very specialized, but now a lot, a lot more universities and there's a lot more training programs for this, so there's more people coming into this sector. So it could potentially get a lot more competitive than that, and the cost could potentially go down. I mean, do you, do you foresee this as more of a stopgap measure and that eventually you would, you would have that function in-house, or do you see the benefits of the, the I, I guess, the third-partiness, the, the fear of retribution, um, kind of 
being eliminated by having it uh, outsourced. Do you help, help me understand kind of what you see for the future of this role? The future of the role, I, I believe that we probably would need to have one in-house and, uh, and you know, grow the program because right now, you know, I'm pretty much the CISO without the title for the city right now. To, to do the job effectively, you need to be, that needs to be your only job. And we often get dinged by auditors because we don't have a dedicated person. They don't like information technology folks doing the job of information security folks because it's, they're, they're usually specialized, they have specialized training and it's all they do is they focus on the security aspect. Did that answer your question on that? It, it does. I, I would just be um, concerned if we had some sort of multi-year commitment to this position as an outsourced position, um, especially in what you've just described, and especially in light of what you've just uh, outlined to me. So that would I, be my primary concern. I would, uh, the, I, the way we'd probably structure the contract is do, you know, one year with additional renewals if we decided to continue with it. So that, that's the way we do some of our larger contracts, and we, I'm sure we'd, Lee would probably advise to do the same thing with this. Thank you. Any other questions for Mr. LaJoy? Thank you, Zach.